Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Anchor Star Wealth Morning Show. I'm your host, Alice Anchor Star, and today we'll be talking about the importance of tomorrow's inflation number, the prediction for this month's Fed meeting, and the concept of a time billionaire. But before we begin, as a reminder, this is a financial education presentation and should not be construed as personal financial advice. Full disclaimer information is available at anchorstarwealth.com. Good morning, Steve. Tomorrow's inflation number will hopefully confirm that inflation continues to decrease. Do you think that this will be the case? Hey, good morning, everybody. Good morning, Allison. And uh, yes, I do think we're going to see a good inflation number this morning. Uh, but before I get into the details, I want to show you something real quick. Uh, shout out to the team that's done a significant redesign, not only to our uh, presentation in the morning. As you can see, it's a new format. Uh, hopefully you like that. Give us feedback if you don't. Uh, but also our website has the addition of, we have three videos now, which these are going to change once we figure out uh, once they're going to be here. But the morning show will be that middle video. But what I want to bring your attention to, if you didn't know is out there, is this uh, wealth client calendar. And this has, you know, this is a busy week. We have the numbers in there that when the CPI number, which is inflation, which Allison just asked about, when that comes out, you can see it on the calendar. Uh, we also have the Federal Reserve uh, announcement tomorrow. Uh, we're going to do our monthly compliance topic on insurance Thursday, and then we have a Friday topic, which is going to be uh, different things. We'll see if we can get that to display uh, you know, a little better as far as the images there. But this is out there. Do I expect you to go there all the time? No, but if you're ever wondering uh, you know, what's going on with Anchor Star Wealth and what topics we're going to cover, they're all going to be here on the calendar for you. So back to Allison's question, what do we expect out of inflation tomorrow? I fully expect that it's going to be really close to 4%, which again is great news. News. The market's already celebrating that uh, today. We're after the market open here. It's nice and green. I expect that to continue. Um, but yeah, although you can read the headline down there from the New York Fed survey, again, this is not the official number. This is the guesstimate, if you will. It says it's going to go down 0.3% uh, down to 4.1. I think it'll actually be a little closer to 4%. So when you think of you know 2022 in review, right, uh, inflation was a huge problem. That 7 8% inflation. Uh, the Fed raised interest rates, you know, pretty much 10 times in a row uh, to combat that, made it kind of painful, uh, but to get inflation under control. So it appears it's working. So the, the other side of that, since we don't have a crystal ball, is if the inflation number is 4.5% or higher uh, tomorrow, then, uh, oh yeah, uh, it's not going to be a pretty day in the market. Um, and, you know, this dovetails in, you know, it's so important because everybody's watching this, but also, you know, t tomorrow starts the Fed meeting um, you know, for them to sit around and talk about this stuff. So they get that number uh, even before they convene. So uh, we'll see what comes out tomorrow morning, but I expect uh, good news. Next, the Fed meeting starts tomorrow with the announcement coming Wednesday afternoon. What's your take? Yeah, so I hope here, and again, it's hope, uh, and the market is pricing us in today, um, that they're going to skip a, a rate hike. And I, you know, what was my, what was our call back at the beginning of 2023 when the year started is like okay 22 2022 was completely painful we had all these rate hikes i was hopeful that they would stop raising rates in the first quarter they did not but after the first quarter when i gave my market market uh, overview i said second quarter is when they're going to stop um, they raised once uh, early on in the quarter and now uh, tomorrow's meeting uh, tomorrow slash meeting Wednesday announcement is going to be the last opportunity of this quarter. And I do think they pause. And honestly, I think that's all we're going to see for rate hikes going forward. So a couple things there is uh, we do need a good inflation number to support that. Um, and, you know, we, we shall see uh, as we do need, uh, you know, if, uh, you know, if that's enough to bring inflation down, then I don't think they're going to continue to raise uh, rates. If they do, so what's the you know what's the opposite of that right? With if they do raise a quarter point, I don't think it's going to move the needle in the market. The market may throw a tantrum in the afternoon, but by the end of the week, I don't think it's going to be a needle mover. Uh, I think the uh, the number is like 78% chance that they don't raise rates uh, this time. So you know, inversely, what is that? 22% chance that they do. So they could, but I don't think they need to. And I think uh, everybody's kind of sick and tired of the Fed. Uh, doing their thing. Plus, we had a couple banks fail earlier this year. I just don't see a lot of gain for them to continue to to raise rates. So, if a world, you know, going forward, if this is the peak uh, peak interest rate, markets, you know, do very well once the Fed stops raising rates. So, you know, that's where I hope we're at. I think the market's already starting to price that in though, and get a little more optimistic out there. Last, investor Graham Duncan coined the term "time billionaire." 
what was he referring to and what are your thoughts? Yeah, so I I'd, I'd not come across this uh, before and I saw it this morning. Josh Brown from uh, Ritz Hold Wealth Management put it on um, LinkedIn. I kind of forwarded it out to my crew saying, you know, truth uh, is that time is your commodity that's the most valuable, right? A lot of people, especially in the money business, think it's all about the money. It's not. It's about the effective use of your time. Um, we, you know, rebranded last, you know, two years ago now and kind of re replaced our, you know, original um, tagline, if you will, with a new one, which was maximize life by maximizing wealth, meaning maximize life, meaning the use of your time, your pursuits of your passions, uh, time with loved ones, friends, etc. cetera, um, by maximizing wealth. So wealth is the tool that allows you to kind of live your best life, if you will. Well, this is a little bit different of a take is, uh, you know, we, we talk about billionaires in, in the finance world, and of course, there's not that many of them, you know, less than 500, if my number's right, uh, worldwide. So they really are pretty rare, but his point uh, in his book here that he wrote, The Time Billionaire, is that uh, you know time being the most precious commodity is that if you look of, at seconds as one unit, right, a billion seconds is about 31 years. So really, somebody you know around Allison's age that's leaving, you know, in or leaving college soon has about two billion two billion you know seconds to live their life, right? So that would take them up to the age of 80, uh, you know, to get the most out of those primary years of their life. So it's an interesting way of looking at it. Um, and then, the, you know, the challenge to you, your, the call to action that all, off, you know, all authors have is how are you going to spend that time, right? You know, and we all kind of know from our own management that, you know, a third of it you basically sp send to spend to sleep, uh, you know, a good hour and a half, two hours, depending on how you consume food, uh, you know, spent eating each day. A lot of people work eight hours a day, some more, some less, some not at all. Uh, you know, the rest of it's kind of a negotiation of what you can what you can do with your time here uh, on this planet. So I think it's I have not read the book. I'm not necessarily vouching for it, but I just certainly like the concept um, down here where, you know, in, you can see this um, see this uh, paragraph that kind of talks about it, you know. A million seconds is 11 days and a billion seconds is 31 years. So really uh, some way to look at to make sure you're getting the most out of your time, not just the most out of your money. Thank you, everyone, for your questions. Please submit your questions as a comment through social media or directly to our email at VIP services at anchorstarwealth.com. And don't forget to like and subscribe to get daily updates. That's all we have for today's show. I'm Allison Anchorstar, and we'll see you back here tomorrow.